folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today, folks, I've got another Ask Perky video for you, which is where I answer your questions. And today's question comes in from Robert Laws, who asks if you could have one guitar, one amp and one pedal, what would it be? Now, I was genuinely lying awake last night trying to think up what I would choose for this video. That's how sad I am. But it's not as simple a question as you might first think, because firstly, for me to choose one of each, I would have to be able to play almost any genre of music with that combination, because I play in a lot of different styles. But also, you have to choose a guitar that works with a certain amp. The amp has to work with the pedal. They all kind of slot together as a sort of triangle of things that need to really integrate with each other. It's not just a case of choosing your favorite guitar, your favorite pedal and your favorite amp, because they might not sound at their best together as a combination. So it's really quite tricky choosing sort of these three things for me. So I'll start with the thing that was the easiest to choose, which is the amp. I would have to go with my lovely Dr. Z Zirek because it is an absolute beast of an amp. This All the rumours you've heard are absolutely true when it comes to the Zirek. It's based around the sort of AC30 type thing. It's an EL84 amp that Dr. Z did with Ken Fisher, who did the old train wreck amps. And it's just so refined as an amp. All the cable runs inside are as short as possible. It's hand point, hand wired point to point. It has a Celestian Alnico Gold in it, which just pairs beautifully with the circuit. The high end fidelity is outstanding, but when you turn it up and you get it compressing, that's where it really shines because it is so touch sensitive under the fingers. You can really control the saturation with your guitar's volume knob. It cleans up amazingly, retains all its sparkly high end. It's just a workhorse amp that works in almost any situation. So I have to go with the Z-Rec for the amp. Now, when it comes to guitars, I eventually narrowed it down to five choices. I love my Gronland. It's probably one of my favorite guitars I own, but it is a junior model. It only has a single pickup. So if I was going for a real sort of versatility of, you know, getting as many usable different tones as I could, I probably wouldn't choose a junior. So that put that out. If I was only ever recording in the studio and I had access to a studio where I had like a control room and a live room so I could be away from the amps, I would almost certainly choose my 330 because it's honky in such a beautiful way. It records so well. The bite from the P90s is outstanding. It's just like the ultimate recording guitar. There's so many tones in there, but being completely hollow and being here in the room with the amp next to me, any level, any gain, it feeds back uncontrollably. So I couldn't realistically use it for any style of music when volume and gain is concerned. So that left three, either a Strat, and arguably you can get the most sounds out of a Strat because it has a five-way switch, two tone knobs, and you know you can get so many sounds out of a Strat. Now I like gainy sounds, especially with the Z-Rec, and a Strat probably wouldn't be my first choice for gainy sounds. You can get amazing sounds out of it. A lot of people get really high gain sounds out of a Strat that were amazing. Simon from Biffy Clyro, for example, gets incredible high gain sounds out of a vintage style Strat. It probably wouldn't be my first choice. So I'll leave the Strat on the side. So the final two that it's come down to is either a Fender Tele, because to me, you can play any style of music on a telly, from sort of blues and jazz to metal. The back pickup rocks like nobody's business. The neck pickup is lovely and warm. The middle position sound is super chimey. You can literally do anything with a telly. And if I was going to a recording session and I could take one guitar and I didn't really know what style of music I was going to be playing, I would probably take a telly. So this was my first instinct as, you know, the guitar to pick. But recently there's been a guitar that's kind of come into my life, not, not as, you know, I've had the guitar for a few years, but in terms of its current configuration that I've changed up recently and I haven't been able to put the thing down, which is my Gibson SG. Now, I've had this guitar for a few years, as I said, and it had some gold foil pickups in it, which are amazing, but I just wasn't really playing the guitar very much. So fairly recently, I've changed it up with these OX4 low wind path replicas and some Faber hardware. And since I've done that, I have not been able to put this thing down. And I think the thing I absolutely love about it is they are definitely path pickups. They have that sort of growl and honk when you add some gain on. But 
they have a, a real single coil clarity to them. So the downfall of humbuckers to me generally is clean sounds because humbuckers are generally a little bit dark and middly sounding compared to a single coil pickup. Not the case with these. So you can play any sort of clean sounds that will punch up there with any single coil you've ever heard. When you put the gain on, it, they just absolutely bark at you. Now you can't use too much gain with these because they're not wax potted and I'm sat right next to the amp so it will squeal if I turn the amp up too much. So I'm only going to go about halfway up on the volume control today on the amp because otherwise these are going to squeal sat right next to the thing. But this is the guitar I'm going to go with because it is just an absolute tone beast this instrument now. It's not as sort of weighty as a Les Paul because it is fairly thin but these pickups are the absolute perfect pickups for this particular guitar. And with the VI pots in it, you know, you can really clean it up and it just jangles but barks when you want it to. So this is the guitar I'm going to choose. And when it comes to a pedal then, now there are so many different pedals you could go with. The Z-Rec, when you turn it up, has so much gain on tap if you want it. It seems a bit unnecessary to choose a gain pedal or a fuzz or something like that. Which to me left two obvious options, either a delay or a modulation pedal specifically a chorus pedal because you know I love the sort of cheesy 80s guitar sounds and if I was going to choose one modulation pedal it would be a chorus. So I do like the sound of a dry amp but in a room so I always use a room mic when I make these videos I love the sort of roomy sound so I was I've lent much more towards the modulation sound because I can get the ambience of a delay or reverb with a room mic. So for a chorus pedal then, there are so many options to choose from. My first instinct was to go for the old CE1 because it's an amazing sounding chorus. It has a preamp in it, so you could use it as an extra gain stage if you wanted to, uh, but without a buffer in line before it, it will take off all your high end and I haven't modified my pedal. So that was kind of out for this video, which left two obvious options. Firstly, the small clone. This is an old vintage EHX small clone, which sounds absolutely amazing. It's probably my favorite chorus sound, but the issue with this pedal for me is the depth switch. So it's either too little or too much to my ears. I don't have a depth knob to control it. So something like the Analog Man Mini Chorus would arguably be a, sort of a good compromise for using a vintage pedal. But ultimately the chorus pedal I decided to use was this one. This is an original Long Dash CE2. Now, the reason I went with this one is because it has that depth knob so I can really sort of dial in sort of how much jangle there is, but it's a super bright shimmery chorus which pairs so well with the sort of high end fidelity in the Z-Rec, but it also shills off quite a lot of low end, which is great for clean sounds because it kind of thins it out and makes it sparkle, but when you put it into a gainy amp, it just tightens up the low end and stops it flubbing out with all the extra content that a chorus pedal will you know, induce into the signal. So it just works so well into clean and dirty amps. So this is eventually the pedal I decided on, an original CE2. So I'm not gonna go too deep into every possible sound that the guitar, amp and pedal can do. I'm gonna leave the pedal set kind of where I would usually have it set and then do some sort of quieter, sort of cleaner things with the amp and then turn it up a bit to get some gain sounds going on. But that in August 2020 is what I'm going to choose from my one guitar, one amp and one pedal. Ask me next week and I'll probably change my mind completely on all three of those things. But right now, that's what I'm gonna to choose today. So I'm gonna plug it all in and get some tones going on to show you what one guitar, one amp and one pedal is capable of and the amount of sort of varied tones you can get. So without further ado, let's get going.
Thank you.